Hi everybody, Arbum from Forbidden Signal, here. Today we are talking about calculus and the equations of motion for rocket flight. And why are we going to talk about calculus? <laughs> yeah, why? To do anything cool, you better know your calculus. Like what? You can't have a day game without it. Suppose you want to send your bunny rabbit to the moon. Come on! They've been sending monkeys, dogs, and flies to space for over 50 years, so why can't they send a rabbit? Sir Hopkins knows how fast his rocket will go, but he doesn't know if it'll actually go to the moon. And guess how he figured that out? Calculus. Let's break the rocket play up into three pieces. Phase one is when the rocket is under stress. Phase two is when the rocket is coasting. After motor burnout, when the rocket is still coasting up. Phase, phase three is when the rocket is in free fall. We need to begin with the physics of flight. The faster something goes, the more wind resistance it encounters. We call this wind resistance drag. Eventually, it will reach a certain speed and it cannot go faster than that certain speed because it will have too much drag. We call this speed terminal velocity. This is the equation for terminal velocity and it has some variables we will explain. Today we have a special story planned just for you. So when Mr. Hopkins is on his launch pad, he is entering his rocket, his rocket is full of fuel. But when he is flying, it is constantly getting lower. And so when he gets to the moon, it is gone. All the fuel is gone. Therefore, this means that the mass is not a constant. But for today's purposes, we are going to pretend that the mass is a constant and we're gonna use the average. The average is between when the rocket is on the launch pad, when it is full, and when the rocket is on the moon, when it is empty. These are our variables. This is mass, and it is 0.287 kilograms. This is the average. This is our M1 rocket motor. It is 0.2 kilograms empty, and it is 0.374 kilograms full. We are using the average of these two masses for today's purposes. We use the average because it's more accurate. This is gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. This is air density, which is P, and it is 1.23 kilograms per meter cube. This is our U1 rocket, and the cross-sectional area is 0 0.00196 meters squared. This is area, which is A. It is 0 0.00196 meters squared. This is drag coefficient, which is CD. It is 0 0.83. But how do you know? Because this book said so. Terminal velocity is important because it will give us all the information for the bigger equations later. These equations only work for the first few kilometers of rocket flight. If your bunny wakes you up one morning and tells you he made a rocket out of carrots, this will let you know if it'll actually go. So if your bunny really wants to go to the moon, let us know and we'll give you the rest of the equations. This equation gives us velocity at any point in time. While the motor is burning. I can't read your handwriting! But how do we get the altitude? This is where calculus comes in. And if we integrate this equation, we get altitude with respect to time. If we were to graph velocity as a function of time, it would be the purple line on this graph. If we were to graph altitude, it would be the area under the purple line or the red area marked Z. The fundamental theorem of calculus allows us to move back and forth between the two um, areas, also known as the red area, altitude, and the purple line, velocity. Integrating is where we move from the line to the area. I have a joke for you. Why do they call it the fundamental theorem of calculus? Because it's so fun! Ha ha! We're using symbolic solutions for calculus today, but we could potentially solve this numerically, but that's a different discussion. 
Once we have integrated the equation for velocity as a function of time, we will get the equation of altitude as a function of time. This is it. The fundamental theorem of calculus is cool because it allows you to change one measure into another. It is really easy to integrate the velocity equation when the rocket is under thrust, but it is really hard to do this when the rocket is coasting after motor burnout because there is hardly any information on how to do this. So guess what we did? This is the equation for velocity as a function of time after motor burnout. When we were done, we wanted to find someone to do a peer review, so we did. He had a suggestion on how to make stuff better. Special thanks to Blair Naka, our peer reviewer from Canada. After integrating, we get altitude with respect to time after motor burnout. These are the equations of motion for the rocket in free fall. But how do you know? And how does he know? So he got someone else to do a peer review of his own work and to launch a rocket with a data logger in it. Then he compared our equations with the data from the data logger. So we know this works. So Mr. Hopkins couldn't really get to the moon, but he could get pretty far. I hope you enjoyed.